The 15th India-Nepal Joint Military Exercise was held on Monday in this border town in the Himalayas. The purpose of the drills is to improve cooperation with regards to counterinsurgency operations in mountainous terrain. The two-day exercise was shortly followed by India's first intercontinental ballistic missile test on Thursday. The counterinsurgency focus of the drills this year is indicative of anxiety over the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan. The Taliban's governing cabinet is heavily represented by a faction known as the Haqqanis, who have particularly close ties to Pakistan. To New Delhi and Kathmandu, the potential for Pakistan to serve as a base for terrorist operations is an increasingly salient threat. Expect India's missile test to spur significant foreign investment into New Delhi's defense industry, lending momentum to the India-Pakistan arms race. In the long term, New Delhi will likely prioritize development of its K-6 submarine-launched ballistic missile. India's anxieties also stem from Pakistan's growing ties with China, whose regional strategies often counter New Delhi's interests. As a result, India and Pakistan will likely continue to conduct tests of their nuclear weapons and other military equipment as a gesture of provocation. Canadians headed to the polls on Monday to vote in a snap general election called by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in mid-August. Trudeau hoped his minority Liberal Party would secure a majority of seats in the House of Commons in order to more effectively address the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and issues such as the high cost of living in Canada. Although the Liberal Party retained its hold on power, it only won 158 seats, falling short of the 170 required for a true majority, with the Conservative opposition coming in at 122 seats. Conservative Party opponent Aaron O'Toole advocated for prioritizing Canada's pandemic response, a platform that helped propel him in the polls from near anonymity to a tie with Trudeau. Today we're setting a few ambitious targets, the biggest of which is to get our vaccination rate up to 90%. We've launched a number, number of measures that the federal government can use to do our part. O'Toole offers a new centrist vision for his party, having embraced the LGBTQ plus community and declaring himself a pro-choice leader. However, despite O'Toole's gains, his popularity in rural areas may not be sufficient to unseat Trudeau's primacy in heavily populated urban areas in the long term. Without a majority, Trudeau will be forced to compromise with the Conservatives, which increases the likelihood of the country entering political gridlock, rendering effective pandemic response difficult in the coming months. Protesters in Buenos Aires gathered over the weekend for the global climate strike movement in order to demonstrate against resource extraction in Argentina. Activists urged the Argentinian government to reject environmentally degrading policies and to hold companies accountable for accelerating environmental destruction. Contrary to these demands, President Alberto Fernandez has continued to support the financial growth of companies that exploit Argentina's natural resources in order to offset a $45 billion IMF loan. Fernandez hopes to use the open pit mining industries in Chubut and Mendoza, as well as a recent agreement with China that will bring large-scale pork production to Argentina to obtain the funds required to pay off the IMF loan. Because of this economic burden, President Fernandez is unlikely to prioritize sound environmental policies or increase regulations on corporations that financially benefit Argentina, which has approximately 12 months before its more substantial IMF repayments are due.